Andre, how are you? Good, good. How are you? It's hey, good I'm, to see you. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, hello from uh, the Coast Guard Academy. Got a lot of fans here amongst the Coast Guard and certainly amongst the mechanicals and uh, all the folks in the, the School of Engineering and Cyber Systems. You're, you're one of our, our, uh, our proudest uh, members and the newest uh, to join the, uh, the core of the, the NASA astronauts and a member of the Artemis generation. So congratulations on, the, on completing the two-year program that NASA had for you. And, and uh, we're very excited to hear what you got next. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be where I am today, and also feels really good to give back and chat with you guys. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing what I do here at NASA and possibly helping out back at the Coast Guard Academy. Excellent, excellent. So um, I had a couple of questions for you, too. Now, I had this theory while I was at NASA. It seemed to me that the experiences that, that we would give our people in the Coast Guard were really relevant to the way that we fly spacecraft, the, the way that NASA, the crew concept, small crews and operating, you know, spacecraft and doing, you know, potentially hazardous things in a pretty inhospitable, you know, environment was was uh, was something that's kind of part and parcel with being in the Coast Guard. Was that at all your experience or? Yeah, it definitely was. And uh, I think this is really neat where you and I can chat and understand about this, where I know your background from the aviation community has helped tremendously in your journey. And on my background, coming from the afloat community and driving ships was another way that it's helped. And specifically, it's been awesome to see how, you know, being, first of all, on a ship is very analogous to being on the ISS. I mean, the ISS has a port and a starboard. Uh, it's a vessel. Uh, it has its own dynamics, uh, just like ships do. And the crew is very important within the ship. We have to respond to emergencies. So when we set GQ or GE on the ship, you know, we need to set uh, certain things on the ISS to be able to stop uh, toxic gas and fires and responses in that nature. So that's overall, uh, from a big picture, uh, you know, very analogous uh, within the trainings. And then at the same time, you know, in the Coast Guard, we're leading at a very young age. I mean, people that are going out there and leading commands of, of boats at age 24 is, is very important because when you join NASA, you're always a leader and you're always a follower. And we need to dance between the two. So you're leading people through responses when you're fighting fires on the ISS, just like you are in the uh, on the ships. Uh, and so that's also very important to be able to be successful. So there's so many parallels to what I've experienced in the Coast Guard that has definitely helped me uh, today uh, where I sit. It's, it's fantastic. So there's other things that, that you've learned about and that you have been kind of pushing the edge of uh, technology and science, like in the robotics world, for example. And, uh, and mm -hmm. we do a lot of robotics in the space program, and, and, and you're much better equipped to do those kinds of things than I was back in the day. So do you find that flying the station arm, that uh, looking at some of the other kind of robotic operations that we would be contemplating doing on the moon, does, does uh, your background, both, both at Johns Hopkins, APL, and even in the Coast Guard, with unmanned systems, has that been relevant? Yeah, it's actually been very relevant. I mean, uh, specifically for the robotic arm on station, uh, I'm actually working the exploration side of the house at NASA. And I'm actually in the charge of the pressurized rover and the lunar terrain vehicle. I mean, these vehicles are gonna be operated autonomously and semi-autonomously or remotely, right? We might have an operator on the human landing system that's operating a robot, which is the pressurized rover. Mm -hmm. And the pressurized rover would do science without a crew, mm -hmm. and it can also have a crew in it. So when the crew's in it, we're operating it real time, we're driving the rover, but when the crew's out of it, we can operate it from the human landing system and also the ground can operate it uh, from Earth. So, you know, we fly the arm on the International Space Station. We we do these commands and we have to understand the controller, the sensitivity. Uh, so this whole new mode of exploration from ISS, you know, we're going to apply the principles from ISS to Artemis. And then at the same time, my background specifically controlling uh, something called wave gliders, mm -hmm. uh, which was also unique back at Johns Hopkins, where I was a naval architect from the Coast Guard that had a lot of experience and education to help develop unique payloads and sensors on this wave glider, which is a surface craft that has a tethered submarine on it, yeah. and it used renewable energy to navigate throughout the world. Uh, 
and had solar powers on it for recharging. Being a pilot on that mission uh, was awesome where we're literally working these sub, you know, surface drones that have subsurface components to talk acoustically to submarines mm -hmm. that are launching ballistic missiles for defense. So I'm coming in with a knowledge of how to, you know, basically operate autonomous drones or remotely controlled drones. And I'm using similar skills and flying the arm on the ISS and me now being a developer in the exploration side for these pressurized rovers, mm -hmm. you can see the parallel. There's a lot of man-machine teaming here within the CONOPS, the concept of operations of how do we use them and when, mm -hmm. and then technically on the control side, the feedback, haptic feedback, and the user side, how do I actually you know, design the displays? I mean, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I'm in a really That's good spot cool. to be able to help and super excited to push the technology forward. So, so a lot of the uh, autonomous systems are getting um, a lot of attention in the Coast Guard too, as they are in all the services. So the idea being right. that, you know, we'd like to have um, uh, persistent domain awareness across like the maritime domain, as well as aviation, you know, the surface and air domain and even space. And, and so we have a, a pretty exciting project we're working on that, that you would have loved back in the day, but it's a, a small form factor CubeSat that'll uh, b basically demonstrate um, extended communications capability for the Coast Guard, like in areas like the Arctic. So, so it's areas where we have a lot of challenges as it is, and and uh, so we've got, we'll we'll be able to fly in uh, a sun synchronous orbit, and uh, be able to essentially use Doppler techniques to be able to localize, for example, the Coast Guard cutter Healy and demonstrate that we can do that. Oh, that's cool. You know, really efficiently from space, and and then we've got a lot going on in the drone world and so forth. So many things that you know that you you've worked with, you know, for many many years. And for me, I'm just kind of learning these things as we go. But it's really exciting. Awesome. It really is. Um, and it's really good to hear the Coast Guard getting into utilizing space assets to help with the ocean domain in multiple domains. I mean, I've had this vision and this dream on top of being an astronaut, how to merge the space domain and the ocean domain. I mean, it's it's incredible. Uh, using satellites, specifically constellation of satellites, I mean, that was something I was working at Johns Hopkins. We were very interested in synthetic aperture radar mm -hmm. to help with moving target indi uh, indication and change detection. We could track ships that way as well. And like, I want to use that knowledge to help with the projects that you have going on here uh, and think about many different ways to try to contribute. So, I mean, the perfect time uh, is now for me to, to jump in and help out. And I'm looking forward to working with, with you guys and trying to talk through the challenges and how to make that project uh, successful. You, you have a lot that you're going to be, you know, looking at doing in the near term, and that's, you know, helping to plan and pave the way for NASA to go to the moon with Artemis and hopefully go there yourself. So any time that we have with you at any time that you can spare, that's wonderful, but we wish you the best of luck. We know you're going to do wonderful things at NASA, and all of us are real excited to watch all that, um, that unfold over these coming years. So best of luck to you. Godspeed. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. It was a pleasure speaking with you, and I appreciate the support. Looking forward to representing us well. Okay. Take care, sir. All right. You too. <laughs>